here is my space. Here is my space. O oh, pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds now do I prophesy, which like dumb mouths do ope their ruby lips to beg the voice and utterance of my tongue. A curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use, and dreadful objects so familiar, that mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hands of war, all pity choked with custom of fell deeds. And Caesar's spirit raging for revenge, with Arte by his side, come hot from hell, shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. That this foul deed shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial. This is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome. No place of safety for Octavius Caesar yet. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you that Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it were a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Now, I'm under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man. So were they all, all honorable men, come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? 
Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, he is an honorable man. I come not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause will hold you then to mourn for him? Oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Let Rome in Tiber melt and the wide arch of the ranged empire fall. Here is my space. Kingdoms are clay. Our dungy earth alike feeds beast as man. The nobleness of life is to do thus. When such a mutual pair and such a twain can do it, in which I bind on pain of punishment the world to wheat, we stand up peerless. Now for the love of love and her soft hours, let's not confound the time with confidence harsh. There's not a minute of our lives should stretch without some pleasure now. What sport tonight? Fine, wrangling queen, <laughs> whom everything becomes. To chide, to laugh, to weep, whose every passion fully strives to make itself in thee fair and admired. And all alone tonight will wander through the streets and note the qualities of people. Come, my queen. <laughs> These strong Egyptian fetters I must break or lose myself in dotage. <laughs> what art thou? Fulvia, my wife, first came into the field against my brother Lucius. Well, what worst? On. Things that are past are done with me. Tis thus. Who tells me true, though in his tale lie deaf, I hear him as he flattered. Speak to me home. Mince not the general tongue. Name Cleopatra, she's called in Rome. Rail thou in Fulvia's phrase, and taunt my faults with such full license as both truth and malice have power to utter. Where died she? There's a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. What our contempt doth often hurl from us, we wish it ours again. The present pleasure by revolution lowering does become the opposite of itself. She's good being gone. The hand could pluck her back that shoved her on. I must from this enchanting queen break off. 10,000 harms more than the ills I know my idleness doth hatch. How now in a barbus? I must with haste from hence. I must be gone. She is cunning past man's thought. Would I'd never seen her. Fulvia is dead. Fulvia is dead. Dead. The business she hath broached in the state cannot endure my absence. Let our officers have noticed what we purpose. I shall break the cause of our expedience to the queen and get her leave to part. For not alone the death of Fulvia with more urgent touches do strongly speak to us, but the letters too of many our contriving friends in Rome petition us at home. Sextus Pompeius hath given the dare to Caesar and commands the empire of the sea. Our slippery people whose love is never linked to the deserver till his deserts are past, 
begin to show Pompey the Great and all his dignities upon his son, who, high in name and honor, higher than both in life and blood, stands up for the main soldier, whose quality going on the sides of the world may danger. Say our pleasure to such whose race, whose time is under us, requires our quick remove from hence. I'm sorry to give breathing to my purpose. Now, my dearest queen, what's the matter? The gods best know who Cleopatra, most sweet queen. The strong necessity of time commands our services a while, but my full heart remains in use with you. Our Italy shines all with civil swords. Sextus Pompeius makes his approaches to the port of Rome. Equality of two domestic powers breeds scrupulous faction. The hated grown to strength are newly grown to love. The condemned Pompey, rich in his father's honor, creeps apace into the hearts of such as have not thrived under the present state whose numbers threaten. And quietness, grown sick of rest, would purge by any desperate change. My more particular, and that which most with you should safe my going, is Fulvia's death. She's dead, my queen. Look here and at my sovereign leisure read the garboils she awaked. At the last best, see when and where she died. Quarrel no more, but be prepared to know the purposes I bear, which are, O oh, cease, as you shall give the advice. By the fire that quickens Nilus slime, I go from hence thy soldier, servant, making peace or war <clears throat> as thou effects. Now, precious queen, forbear, and give true evidence to his love that stands an honorable trial. You'll heat my blood no more. I leave you, lady, by my sword. <laughs> but that your royalty holds idleness your subject, I should take you for idleness itself. Let us go. Come. Our separation so abides and flies that thou reciting here goest yet with me, and I, hence fleeting, here remain with thee. Away! <clears throat> Sit, Octavius. I learn you take things ill which are not so or being concern you not. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was to you? You do mistake your business. My brother never did urge me in his act, I did inquire it, and have my learning from some true reports that drew their swords with you. Did he not rather discredit my authority with yours and make wars alike against my person, having alike your cause? Of this my letters before did satisfy you. If you'll patch a quarrel, as matter whole you have to make it with, it must not be with this. As for my wife, I would you had her spirit in such another. The third of the world is yours, which with a snaffle you may pace easy, but not such a wife. So much uncurbable, her garboils, Caesar, made out of her impatience, which not wanted shrewdness of policy too, I grieving grant did you too much disquiet, for which you must but say, I could not help it. No, Lepidus, let him speak. The honor is sacred that he talks on now, supposing that I lacked it. But on, Caesar, the article of my oath, Denied, no, neglected rather. And that when poisoned hours had bound me up from my known knowledge. As nearly as I may, I'll play the penitent to you, but mine honesty shall not make poor my greatness, nor my power work without it. Truth is, that Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt, made wars here, for which myself the ignorant motive do so far ask pardon as permits mine honor to stoop in such a case. I'm not married, Caesar.
let me hear. Take Anthony Octavia to his wife to make this good. May I never to this good purpose that so fairly shows dream of impediment. And from this hour, the heart of brothers govern in our loves and sway our great design. I did not think to draw my sword against Pompey, for he hath laid strange courtesies and great of late upon me. I must thank him only, lest my remembrance suffer ill report. I'd heal of that, defy him. Where lies he? What is his strength by land? By sea he is the absolute master, such is the fame. Would we had spoke together? Haste we for it. Yet, ere we put ourselves in arms, dispatch we the marriage business we have talked of. The world in my great office will sometimes divide me from your bosom. My Octavia, read not my blemishes in the world's report. I have not kept my square, but that to come shall all be done by the rule. Good night, dear lady. Now, Sarah, you do wish yourself in Egypt. Say to me, soothsayer, whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Caesar's. Be it art or happy, I've spoken true. The very dice obey him. And in our sports, my better cunning faints under his chance. If we draw lots, he speeds. His cocks do win the battle still of mine when it is all to naught. I will to Egypt, and though I make this marriage for my peace, in the east my pleasure lies. Thou canst not fear us, Pompey, with thy sails. We'll speak to thee at sea. At land thou knowest how much we do or count thee. The beds of the east are soft, and thanks to you that brought me timelier than my purpose hither, for I have gained by it. I crave our composition may be written and sealed between us. Thus do they, sir. They take the flow of the Nile by certain scales in a pyramid. They know by the height, the lowness, or the mean, if dearth or foison follow. The higher Nilus swells, the more it promises. As it ebbs, the seedsman upon the slime and ooze scatters his grain, and shortly comes the harvest. I, Lepidus, your crocodile, it is shaped uh, uh, like itself and is as broad as it has breadth. It is just so high as it is, and moves with its own organs. It lives by that which nourisheth it, and the elements once out of it, it transmigrates. Of its own color, too, and the tears of it are wet. These quicksands, Lepidus, keep off them, or you sink. Strike the vessel's hold. Here's to thee, Caesar. Be a child of the time. Come, let's all take hands till that the conquering wine hath steeped our sense in soft and delicate lethe. Mm. No further, Caesar. Make me not offended in your mistrust. You shall not find, though you be therein curious, the least cause for what you seem to fear. So, 
The gods keep you. Make the hearts of Romans serve your ends. We will here part. The April's in your sister's eyes. This is love's spring. These the showers to bring it on. Be cheerful. Come, sir, come. I will wrestle with you in my strength of love and give you to the gods. Farewell. Nay, nay, Octavia, not only that, that were excusable, that and thousands more of semblable import, but he hath waged new wars against Pompey, made his will, and read it to public ear, spoke scantly of me, when perforce he could not but pay me terms of honor, cold and sickly he vented them, most narrow measure lent me. When the best hint was given him, he not took or did it from his teeth, Gentle Octavia, let your best love draw to that point which seeks best to preserve it. If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Better I were not yours than yours so branchless. But as you requested, yourself shall go between us. Meantime, lady, I'll raise the preparation of a war shall stain your brother. Is it not strange, Canidius, that from Tarentum and Brundusium he could so quickly cut the Ionian Sea and take in Torin? You have heard, aunt, my queen. We'll fight him by sea, for that he dares us to it. By sea, by sea, I'll fight by sea. Our overplus of shipping will we burn, and with the rest full manned from the head of Actium, beat the approaching Octavius. Yet if we fail, we then can do it at land. Our 19 legions thou shalt hold by land and our 12,000 hordes. We'll to our ships away my Thetis. Hark, the land bids me tread no more upon it is a shame to bear me. Friends, come hither. I am so lated in the world that I have lost my way forever. I had a ship laden with gold. Take that, divide it, fly, make your peace with Caesar. I have fled myself. I've instructed cowards to run and show their shoulders. Friends, be gone. My treasure's in the harbor. Take it. Oh, I followed that I blush to look upon. My very hairs do mutiny, for the white reprove the brown for rashness, and they them for fear and doting. Friends, be gone. You shall have letters from me to some friends that will sweep your way for you. Pray you look not sad, nor make replies of loathness. Take the hint that my despair proclaims. Let that be left that leaves himself. To the seaside straightway, I will possess you of that ship and treasure. Leave me, I pray. A little. Pray you now. Nay, do so, for indeed I have lost command. Therefore, I pray you. I'll see you by and by. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, fie, fie, fie. Yes, my lord, yes. He at Philippi kept his sword in like a dancer. While I struck the lean and wrinkled Cassius, twas I that the mad Brutus ended. He alone dealt on lieutenantry. No purpose had in the brave squares of war, yet now... No matter, I have offended reputation, a most unnoble swerving. Oh, whither hast thou led me, Egypt? 
See how I convey my shame out of thine eyes by looking back what I have left behind, destroyed in dishonor. I followed your fearful sails. Egypt thou knewest too well, my heart was to thy rudder tied by the strings, and thou shouldst tow me after. Or my spirit thy full supremacy thou knewest, and that thy beck might from the bidding of the gods command me. Now I must to the young man <coughs> send humble treaties, dodge and palter in the shifts of loneliness, who with half the bulk of the world played as I pleased, making and marring fortunes. You did know how much you were my conqueror, and that my sword, made weak by my affection, would obey it on all cause. Fall not a tear, I say. One of these rates all that is won and lost. Give me a kiss. Even this repays me. We sent our schoolmaster. Is he come back? Love, I'm full of lead. <laughs> Some wine within here and our viands too. Fortune knows we scorn her most when most she offers blows. <coughs> Is that his answer? The queen shall then have courtesy so she will yield us up. Let her know it. To the boy Caesar send this grizzled head, and he will fill thy victims to the full with principalities. To him again. Tell him he wears the rose of youth upon him, from which the world should note something particular. His coins, ships, legions may be a coward's, whose ministers will prevail under the service of a child as soon as in the command of Caesar. I dare him, therefore, to lay his gay comparisons apart and answer me, declined, sword against sword, ourselves alone. I'll write it. Follow me. Favors? By Jove that thunders, what art thou, fellow? Approach there. Ah, you kite. Now gods and devils' authority melts from me. I am Antony yet. Take hence this jack and whip him. Should I find him so saucy with the hand of she? Here, what's her name since she was Cleopatra? Tug him away. Being whipped, bring him again. This jack of Caesar shall bear us an errand to him. You were half blasted ere I knew you. Ah. Have I my pillow left unpressed in Rome? Forborn the getting of a lawful race and by a gem of women to be abused by one that looks on feeders. You have been a boggler ever. Ah, but when we in our viciousness grow hard, oh misery on the wise gods seal our eyes. In our own filth drop our clear judgments, make us adore our errors, laugh at us while we strut to our confusion. I found you as a morsel called on dead Caesar's trencher. Nay, you were a fragment of Gnaeus Pompey's. Besides what hotter hours unregistered in vulgar fame you have luxuriously picked out. For I am sure though you can guess what temperance should be, you know not what it is. To let that fellow who will take rewards and say God quit you, be familiar with my playfellow, your hand, this kingly seal and plight of high hearts. Oh, that I were on the hill at Barsan to outroar the horned herd, for I have savage cause. Is he whipped? Get thee back to Caesar. Tell him your entertainment. Look thou say he makes me angry with him, for he seems proud and disdainful. Harping on what I am, not what he knew I was. He makes me angry. And at this time most easy it is to do it, when my good stars that were my former guides have empty left their orbs and shot their fire into the abysm of hell. Hence with thy stripes begone. Hmm. 
Alak, our Terran moon, is now eclipsed. And it portends alone the fall of Antony. To flatter Caesar, would you mingle eyes with one that ties his points? Cold-hearted toward me. I am satisfied. Octavius sits down in Alexandria where I will oppose his fate. Our force by land hath nobly held. Our severed navy too have knit again and fleet, threatening most sea-like. <laughs> where hast thou been, my heart? Was thou here, lady? If from the field I shall return once more to kiss these lips, I will appear in blood. I and my sword will earn our chronicle. There's hope in it yet. I will be trouble sinewed, hearted, breathed, and fight maliciously. For when mine hours were nice and lucky, men did ransom lives of me for jests. Yet now I'll set my teeth and send to darkness all that stop me. Come, let's have one other gaudy night. Call to me all my sad captains. Fill our bowls once more. Let's mock the midnight bell. Dost thou hear, my queen? The next time I do fight, I'll make death love me. For I will contend even with his pestilent scythe. He will not fight with me in a barber's. Why should he not? Well, my good fellows, wait on me tonight. Scant not my cups, and make as much of me as when mine empire was your fellow too and suffered my command. Tend me tonight. Maybe it is the period of your duty. Haply you shall not see me more, or if, a mangled shadow. Perchance tomorrow you will serve another master. I look on you as one that takes his leave. Mine honest friends, I turn you not away, but like a master married to your good service, stay till death. Tend to me tonight two hours, I ask no more. The gods yield you for it. No, my hearts, I hope well of tomorrow, and will lead you where other I'd expect victorious life than death and honor. <laughs> Let's to supper come and drown consideration. Their preparation is today by sea. We please them not by land. Our foot upon the hills adjoining to the city shall stay with us. Order for sea is given. We have put forth the haven. Yet they are not joined. Where yon pine does stand, I shall discover all. All is lost. This foul Egyptian hath betrayed me. My fleet of yield were to the foe, and yonder they cast their caps up and carouse together like friends long lost. Triple turned whore! Tis thou hast sold me to this novice, and my heart makes only wars on thee. Bid them all fly. For when I am avenged upon my charm, I have done all. Bid them all fly. O oh, son, thy upright shall I see no more. 
Fortune and Antony part here. Even here do we shake hands. All come to this. The hearts that spaniel me at heels to whom I gave their wishes do discandy, melt their sweets on blossoming Caesar, and this pine is bark that overtopped them all. Betrayed I am. Oh, this false soul of Egypt, this grave charm whose eye becked forth my wars and called them home, whose bosom was my crown at my chief end, and like a right gypsy hath at fast and loose beguiled me to the very heart of loss. What hear us? Oh, thou spell, avaunt. Vanisher, I will give thee thy deserving and blemish Caesar's triumph. Let him take thee and hoist thee up to the shouting plebeians. Follow his chariot like the greatest spot of all thy sex. Most monster-like be shown for poor diminutives, for dolts, and let patient Octavia plough thy visage up with her prepared nails. There it is well thou art gone, if twere well to live. But better twere thou fellst into my fury, for one death might have prevented many. What hear us? Uh, the shirt of Nessus is upon me. Teach me, Alcides, thou mine ancestor, thy rage. The witch shall die. To the young Roman boy she has sold me, and I fall under this plot. She dies for it. What hear us? Eros, thou yet beholdest me. Sometimes we see a crowd that cloud that's dragonish, a vapor sometime like a bear or lion, a towered citadel, a pendant rock, a forked mountain, a blue promontory with trees upon it that nod unto the wind and mock our eyes with air. Thou hast seen these signs. They are black vespers pageants. That which is now a horse. Even with a thought, the rack dislims and makes it indistinct as water is in water. My good Navy Ross, now thy captain is even such a body. Here I am, Antony, yet cannot hold this physical shape, my knave. I made these wars for Egypt and the queen whose heart I thought I had, for she had mine, which while it was mine had annexed unto it a million more now lost. She, Eros, has packed cards with Caesar and false played my glory unto an enemy's triumph. Nay, weep not, gentle Eros. There is left us ourselves to end ourselves. Oh, thou vile lady, she has robbed me of my sword. Hence, saucy eunuch, peace. She hath betrayed me and shall die the death. She's dead then? Anam, hear us. Long day's task is done and we must sleep. The sevenfold shield of Ajax cannot keep the battery from my heart. Oh, cleave my sides. Heart, once be stronger than thy continent, crack thy frail case. I will not take thee, Cleopatra, and weep for my pardon. So it must be, for now all length is torture. Since the torch is out, lie down and stray no further. Now all labor mars what it does, yea, very force entangles itself with strength. Seal then and all is done. Eros, I come, my queen. Eros, stay for me. Where souls do couch on flowers, we'll hand in hand, and with our sprightly port make the ghosts gaze. 
Dido and Aeneas shall want troops, and all the horns be ours. Come, hear us, hear us. Since Cleopatra died, I've lived in such dishonor that the gods detest my baseness. I, that with my sword quartered the world, and or green Neptune's back with ships made cities, condemn myself to lack the courage of a woman, less noble mind than she, which by her death our Caesar tells, I am conqueror of myself. Thou art sworn, Eros, that when the exigent should come, as now tis come indeed, when I should see behind me the inevitable prosecution of disgrace and horror, that on my command thou then wouldst kill me. Do it. The time has come. Thou strikest not me, to Caesar thou defeatst, put color in thy cheek. Eros, would that wouldst thou be windowed in great Rome, and see thy master thus with pleached arms, bending down his corrigible neck, his face subdued to penetrative shame, while the wheeled seat of fortunate Caesar drawn before him branded his baseness that ensued? Come then, for with a wound I must be cured. Draw that thy honest sword which thou hast worn most useful for thy country. When I did make thee free, swarest thou not then to do this when I bade thee? Do it at once, or thy president's services are all but Accidents unpurposed. Draw and come. Lo thee. Let it do at once the thing why thou hast drawn it. Tis said, man, and farewell. Now, Eros. Thrice nobler than myself. Thou teachest me, O valley and Eros, what I should and thou couldst not. My queen and Eros have by their brave instruction got upon me a nobleness in record. But I will be a bridegroom in my death and run into it as to a lover's bed. Come then, and Eros, my master dies, thy scholar. To do thus, <gasps> I learned of thee. <clears throat> How? Not dead? Not dead? Oh, God! Oh, dispatch me! I have done my work, ill friends. Oh, I'll make an end of what I have begun. Art thou dead? Let him that loves me strike me dead. Art thou dead, Diomed? Draw thy sword, give me sufficing strokes for death. Cleopatra sent thee? When did she send thee? Where is she? Too late, Diomed. <laughs> Call my God, I prithee. Bear me, good friends, where Cleopatra bides. Tis the last service I shall command you. Nay, my good fellows, do not please sharp fate to grace it with your sorrows. Bid that welcome that comes to punish us, and we punish it, seeming to bear it lightly. Take me up. I have led you oft. Carry me now, my friends, and give my thanks, and have my thanks for all. Not Caesar's valor hath overthrown Antony, but Antony hath triumphed on himself. <laughs> I am dying, Egypt, dying. Only I hear him poach in death a while until of many thousand kisses the poor last I lay upon these lips. Oh, quicker I am gone. I'm dying, Egypt, dying. Give me some wine. Let me speak a little. One word, sweet queen, of Caesar. 
seek your honor with your safety. Woo. Gentle, hear me. None about Caesar trust but Proculeus. Oh. The miserable change now at my end. Lament no sorrow at. But feed your thoughts. In feed, treat your thoughts in feeding them with those my former fortunes, wherein I lived the greatest prince of the world, the noblest, and did now not basely die, not willingly put off my helmet to my countrymen. A Roman by a Roman, valiantly vanquished. Now my spirit is going. I can no more. A Roman by a Roman, valiantly vanquished. <laughs> a Roman by a Roman, valiantly vanquished. Now my spirit is going. I can no more. <laughs>